Hi, we're going to make today our polpettone with scamorza, which is a meatloaf with the scamorza or mozzarella. Okay, what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you the ingredients in a little bit. And just to let you know, this, pul this pulpitone or this meatloaf, you can make this ahead of time, uh, roll it up, put it in the fridge, and when you're ready to cook it, take it out, put it in the oven, or you can make it at the time you want to make it for dinner. Make it ahead of time and uh, go ahead and slice it up and bring it to work the next day. All right, so let's go ahead and it's a very fast uh, moving recipe. So here it is, here's our ingredients. We're gonna show you them right now. Okay, and you're going to need for this ingredients, again, you can use meat, you can use turkey, chicken, you can use the three types like the Italians do, meat, veal, and uh, pork, but today we're going to make it with some meat. So right here I have one pound of meat, ground meat, we have two eggs, the secret in this recipe is the potato, and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Then we have two tablespoons of parmigiano. We have about four tablespoons of uh, parsley because we're gonna be using this in the meatloaf and in the filling. Of course, salt and pepper to season. And back here we have our sauteed mushrooms, which I will insert how to go ahead and, and, and saute these. Here's how we're going to uh, saute these mushrooms that we were talking about before. So we're gonna add a half a cup of uh, extra virgin olive oil, okay, and uh, make sure that it's nice and don't let it get too hot. And put in your two cloves that I've cut up and chopped. You can put them in with the um, press, it's fine too. Just don't let them burn. Don't let your garlic ever go too much. Just It's going to grab that hot oil which we just put it in, so already the aroma will come out, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and put in our mushrooms. Okay. You can hear them sizzling away already. Okay. And to this, we're gonna add some salt. And we're gonna add some pepper. And by the way, you can also add, not now, when you're done, when they're done sauteing, because you'll see, you know, this, there'll come a little bit of water excess will come out from the mushroom. And when they turn nice and brown, what I want you to do is let them cool down because we're going to have to put them in the, on top, in the meatloaf. Okay. So we have them right there. Ours are just sizzling away. And then we can add some parsley, as I was saying, at the end when they're cooled down a little bit. And then we have our one slice of uh, hard bread, like bread that maybe you've got laying around. Uh, always freeze that bread, by the way. When you go to the store and you get some sourdough bread or something, freeze it if it's getting stale, and it's always good. And this is soaked in, in, in milk, about a half a cup of milk. Or you can use some white bread. And then our... Uh, really nice scamorza which I have cut up into strips okay we're gonna be putting that on the meatloaf and some breadcrumbs are gonna be using this outside and a little bit inside the meatloaf so we're gonna get started here I'm just gonna move away what we don't need right now because that's for our filling and go ahead and get our ground meat and give it a little bit of a break up here you know when you get them this is fresh or Butcher uh, put it through the machine for me just this morning. Okay, and we're gonna add our eggs. I'm gonna add one, and then if I need the other one, sometimes your eggs are big. These are pretty big, super-sized eggs. Okay, now we're gonna get our grater and put in our secret recipe on the smaller part, and this gives moisture. To the uh, to the meatloaf. Now, this is the way the recipe is. Again, maybe you can substitute this for uh, grated carrots, grated zucchini. For now, I'm making the original recipe. Okay. So as you can see, I'll only take a few more minutes. Here it goes. Okay. 
right? That's one medium sized uh, potato, by the way. And you probably won't even see it when it's in here. Okay. There you go. Almost done. Okay. Make sure you get that all. Secret trick. Turn it the other way. You never want to go the, the, that way. And then just put it in here. Okay. So we have that. And then we have our two tablespoons of Parmigiano. Okay. Get rid of these. I'm going to go ahead and put about two tablespoons and leave a little bit for the uh, mushrooms, okay? So I'm going to put that to the side. Salt and pepper. I have about one teaspoon of each one. Remember, your parmigiano is pretty um, salty too, but you could omit the salt and just go ahead and use the parmigiano. Okay. I'm going to add just a little bit, maybe two tablespoons of the breadcrumbs right now. That egg will, will give me, well, when we put this uh, bread in here now, again, you squeeze out that excess and just put it through your hands. You don't need the outer part of the bread, but if you want and it's soft enough, go ahead. It kind of calls just for the white part. Even if you're using an American loaf bread or an Italian loaf bread, just use the inner part. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to mix this up. Pretty simple recipe right now. Just pretty simple. Okay. And I said, I kept that egg out, and you know what? The egg is needed. Thought maybe I could get away with it. All right, there you go. It's okay. If your eggs are small, then you too, um, you know, just see how your meat is. Sometimes the moisture in the meat can be a little different. And now if you get a little bit too much moisture in your meatloaf, you can always add a little bit more breadcrumbs. And always put your ingredients from the top and let them let them kind of waterfall in. It, they'll, it's better. Your ingredients will be all over. If you put it just like right there like that, it's going to go right in there and then the outside won't get it. Okay. And we all know that meatloaf is nice don't manage it too much but we know that meatloaf likes to and here's where you can feel if you need a little bit more breadcrumb i kind of like it a little bit more drier okay there you go all right now comes a little bit of the fun part because we're going to be putting in those sauteed mushrooms that we sauteed before and cooled down and a sheet of parchment paper. You'll need two of these, by the way. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put that right there. And I want you to put another sheet on top. And roll this out to a rectangle. Let's see if we can manage that. Now, you know what? You can make these even individual. I've had people uh, write to me and say, hey, Marisa, I've made them individual. They come really nice. Okay, go ahead and make them individual. Make teeny little, little teeny weeny ones, and you can bring those in your lunches. So kind of make this as square as you can make it. Remember, cooking isn't rocket science. All right, now comes the fun part. Now we take our, we're going to take our um, mushrooms, our sautéed mushrooms. We don't need this one anymore. Let's get a spoon out of my drawer. And what we're going to do is, we're going to just go ahead. Look how pretty those mushrooms are. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. Fresh mushroom. Now you can get away with frozen. You can go ahead and saute the frozen ones. 
I'm pretty sure they're the same. But my weekly uh, shopping list usually has a pack of mushrooms for anything. Our mushrooms with um, our pasta dishes, fettuccine with uh, mushrooms. So, I'm giving away all my recipes here. Now I gotta make them for you. Okay, so we have those mushrooms there. Okay, sorry about the noise. Okay, now here you could do many things. You could go ahead and put uh, prosciutto, ham, zucchinis cut up all in little strips. This is the original recipe that I'm using today and it's called mushroom escamorza. But you could go ahead and change up this recipe. It's pretty easy. You don't want to, you know, use the cheese. Okay, alrighty, okay, put these all in here, arrange that, and I'm sure everybody's good at doing that, okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of press that down in here, and we're going to turn this with our help, having our parchment paper help us, okay. Now let me turn that around so you can see. So I kind of press it down, turn it halfway. If anybody is a, a what do you call the Chinese rolls? You know how to make these. Okay, so there you go. Close up your ends. Close them nice. Close it really good so nothing leaks out because we have that nice scamorza. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a tray, add some of our breadcrumb, and we're going to roll this in our breadcrumb. Just throw that on here. Make sure the other edge, other side is sealed too. Okay. We're going to put some on top. There you go. Mmm, smells nice already. Okay. So we're going to go and place this in a uh, non-stick pan. I have a little non-stick pan here I usually use. Okay. And we're just going to put that in. Make sure the other end is down in there. I guess you could use even the uh, parchment paper to help you. Okay, there you go. So we have everything here. Here it is. A little, a little meatloaf. Again, it came really nice, big meatloaf. I'd say this is good for about uh, four, four people. So here's the meatloaf. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to put this nice meatloaf in a 350 degree oven. Okay for 30 minutes. The trick is at 15 minutes, I would like you to turn it, okay? Kind of use a spatula and give it a, a turn so that the meatloaf will stay nice and round. If not, you could leave it also, but I kind of give it a turn. All right, and then we're gonna come back and show you our finished product, okay? And don't forget to subscribe, by the way. I will mention it later. All right, my kitchen smells wonderful. Here's our beautiful meatloaf. Now, you, I did it uncovered, and if you want it to be a little bit more moist, you can also leave it in that um, parchment paper wrap uh, and then take it out at the end. But I think it'll be a little bit too moist, but it came out just perfect, just beautiful. Looks lovely. There's a little scamorza or mozzarella, and we're going to go and cut it now and find our lovely, we're going to take a look at it. Let's cut it right about here. How's that? Okay, all right, okay, let's see, whoa, beautiful. Let's turn that around and just take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Smell those wonderful. Let's cut a nice piece. And you can cool this down a little. This came right out of the oven and I think it's just really beautiful. Look at that. 
look at that beautiful that beautiful scamorza just coming all apart and that's what it does scamorza has filaments in it isn't that beautiful that's lovely okay and I would serve it next to some green beans but you can also serve it with mashed potatoes and um, we're gonna take we're gonna take a little uh, uh, piece of this right here okay and a little bit of olive oil if you like you can always add olive oil. I don't think you have enough olive oil. There you go. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to try a piece. Oh, those mushrooms look really gorgeous in there. So does the mozzarella. Mmm. Let's see here. Look at that. That's scamorza. You can play with that. So long. Look at that. Mmm. The scamorza is so chewy. Very good. I have another little piece. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Delicious. Well, this is our uh, meatloaf. Recipe. And it is just wonderful. So I will hope you guys try it. Remember, subscribe to Marisa's Cucina Italiana. Share the video, please. And also give me a thumbs up if you like. Okay, leave some comments below. Let me know if yours came out. Take a picture and uh, send it to me. All right? And you can follow me on all the, uh, ex the medias that are out there. They're all listed below. All right, enjoy. I did. Manja, manja.